Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <clears throat> Fabulites, this is Angela with another edition of Notes on the Newsfeed. Woo! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Where I share with you headlines, things that I have headlines and my thoughts on the articles or the headlines or the issue or just my thoughts on my thoughts. But what I do is when I read my news feed, if there's something that catches my attention, I might read it at the same time and then want to share it with people on my news feed so it's going to get text to my tablet. Or I might be like, I don't really have time to read this now, but that looks interesting. This looks interesting. This looks interesting. Or I might be able to um, click on it once and read um, the little, um, you know, paragraph. The little paragraph. I'm trying to turn this the music thing off. I don't want to be running the battery when I'm just sitting here. Um, so some of these articles, I've read the whole article. Some of these articles, I have just skimmed the article. Some of these articles, I've just read the little paragraph. When you click through past the um, headline, or I might have just skimmed the little paragraph when you click through past the headline. Some of them, I've just read the headline. Did I tell you that I'm Angela and the channel is Be Fabulous You? Well, if you didn't know, now you know. And if you already know, well, you know again. Okay, I got a couple of things. So let's jump right into it. CNN's Reliable Sources, I guess that's a show on CNN, CNN's Reliable Sources calls Fox and Friends a Trump infomercial. Financial abuse is a form of domestic violence and Serena Williams wants you to know about it. Um, I click through, it's some insurance company that she's a spokesperson for. Um, who wants women to be um, financially prepared. But I do think in general, um, when someone has power over you, um, I don't know if that's right. Because in general, I think people are good. But sometimes I think that when people have power over you, they will use it. So I guess it depends on the person because some people can have power over you and not use it, huh? But like, I guess watching a lot of these like, um, basketball wives type shows I kind of feel like um, some of these people feel some of these women feel like they're in they're desperados like they feel like they don't have any option they can't do better all by themselves so they just have to you know take what they can get and take it however they get it and if it come with you know a smack a literal smack in the face okay if it come with a figurative slap in the face okay I mean they just seem like they're here for all of it because of money um, so, and I don't know if financial abuse is like some of these women who, um, some of these basketball wives and girlfriends and stuff who we think, oh, they just have access to all the money. They may not have access to all the money. He may give them $50 to go to the grocery store. He may be controlling, you know, what you get when. And so, you know, if you wanted to just up and leave, unless you had been planning, squirreling away, just like an old fashioned housewife, you know, squirreling away $5 here, $2 there, $3 there, um, you know, you, you might not be able to leave. So anyway, um, I didn't read the article, but, um, I, I, I guess, yay, Serena, the dog is back from the park. Okay, Bella. All right. That's good, girl. You let them know. I think that was a strong, powerful assertion of you seeing them. And I think, yeah, just chill on that. Sometimes, you know, you you're saying too much, you just say too much, right? Just, you don't have to say the most, you can say the least. Okay. Um, Edward McCabe, first African American to hold statewide office in a northern state. We were just talking about black governors. Statewide office sounds like governor, but maybe it's like the state, the Senate or Congress in the state. But anyway, I just thought it was interesting. So, I haven't read it yet, but... Edward McCabe. Yay! Janet Harmon Bragg, first African American woman to hold a commercial pilot license. Yay! Louisiana becomes first state to ban criminal history question on college applications. I didn't even realize they asked that question on college applications. Kayak is letting travelers search for travel deals using emojis. So like when I clicked through, the example that they had was like a beer mug. 
So I had my first thought was, oh, are we getting um, less literate as a country? Like, I don't know if you 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 might you may or may not have been around at the time when um, McDonald's stopped using word like, you know, they started putting pictures on their cash register. And I remember that so many people were up in arms about it. Like people don't even know how to spell the word fries. They have to put a picture of fries on their hamburger. I mean, what you know? And that's what I was thinking. Wow, people, you know, we're going to get to a point more and more where, you know, we don't because I, I definitely notice, um, you know, with text messages and, you know, just a lot of times people are writing, but um, grammar, spelling, um, punctuation, you know, it's, it's just a different style of writing. And it, the style of writing does not prioritize things like grammar, spelling and punctuation. Um, and I remember reading an article a couple, um, maybe six months ago that was like, it's rude to use punctuation in text messages. And I was just scandalized and I shared it with one of my friends and she was scandalized too at the time. But you know what I've noticed here recently when she texts me, she doesn't use punctuation, but anyway, so that was my first thought. Oh my God, we're devolving. We're becoming less literate, you know. But then the other thought that I had is when you think of um, like hieroglyphs or symbolic language, like I feel like a symbol is able to encompass a lot that words can't quite capture sometimes. You know, like even if you look at you know, if you look at an actor perform, there's so much more to the performance than just the words. Or if you look at a piece of, of artwork, a lot of times you're going to get messages even when there aren't any words there, you know. And so, you know, I think that symbols and can be very powerful. Like we were watching um, um, AM Joy this morning and they did a story about, I think the man's name is Vincent Chin, but he was killed in Highland Park, Michigan. They said Detroit, Michigan, but I actually Googled it and it was Highland Park, Michigan. And he even, he was killed in the McDonald's that was across, I, I'm assuming it was the only McDonald's I knew of in Highland Park. It used to be basically across the street from my street. And he was killed because, well, it was like a, an issue of racially motivated um, or it was like before the hate crime laws, but it was like a hate crime. And, um, you know, so this man was beat to death by some people who had by, well, one man in particular, one man held him. And then another man took a baseball bat and he just hit him in the head until his head opened. And, um, his anger or part of the anger and hostility and the aggression had to do with the fact that as an auto worker, this man felt that he had lost his job because the Japanese were creating, you know, because of Japanese cars, right? The Japanese car industry and people in Detroit in the Detroit area were really angry at that time about that issue or whatever. Like, and I remember growing up, you hardly ever, ever really saw very many foreign cars. We had a Volvo when I was a kid, but you just, it, they just weren't common. And when I moved to other places, I didn't, but in some other places, I'm like, oh my gosh, there are so many foreign cars, but that wasn't really the way that I grew up. And I didn't even realize, I thought everybody in the country basically dealt with American cars, except for, you know, people who had, you know, I knew people who had Beamers and, you know, there were foreign cars, but not like other places. But, um, so they, you know, they were talk, calling him a Japanese and saying it was his fault that they didn't have jobs and all this other stuff. But when AM Joy ran the story, she showed a picture of him and then she showed a picture of two black cops. <coughs> so I was like, did the two black cops kill? Is it Vincent Chin? I think his last name was definitely Chin. I'm not sure if his first name was Vincent and it was like 82 or 85. But, and so it was like just that Chin's image and then the two black cops and then they were talking and went on to something else. So I started Googling and researching because it's like, that's my hood. I don't remember hearing anything about that. And then I'm like, it doesn't, it kind of surprised me to see that black people had killed him. But I don't know why that image was there. And they said that two undercover cops observed, you know, arrested him because um, they were witnesses to what happened. Arrested the men who had, um, one had held and one had beat this man to death. But um, the cops were undercover. They weren't, they were off duty cops. So I don't think they were in uniform. So I don't know who these black uniformed officers were. But that image I thought was very compelling because if you didn't listen to the story or if you just heard a little bit of it, um, you would think that though I, I thought though from what I heard and what I saw, 
I thought those two black men had killed that Asian man who was Chinese, not Japanese, by the way. I think he was Chinese. Um, so anyway, just the pow how powerful images can be and how much inf how much they can convey. How, you know, images convey a lot. So, um, yeah. So emojis, you know, I don't know. I'm of two minds about emojis. And, you know, I'm, I tend to be a... Um, I try to focus on the positive and, you know, so it's kind of like, well, maybe it's, it's good, you know, and, you know, we're evolving to a higher, deeper um, level of communication. And that's what I choose to believe. We're evolving to a more spiritual, intuitive, comprehensive um, way of communicating with each other. So there. Here's how much money people are making from their side gigs on Airbnb, Lyft, TaskRabbit, and more. And it's like overwhelmingly most people are like making less than $500 a month. And I didn't really go into the article, but what I thought, what I was curious about is that um, I remember hearing a few years ago that $500 a month can make a huge difference in a, um, a, the income of a family and that that can make the difference between them going under and being able to survive. Um, so anyway, just, you know, thinking about the fact that, um, you know, people are probably, people are doing stuff like that because that's what they need to do. Or, you know, I don't know, but that, you know, even though in one way you're like, oh, you know, five, less than $500 a month, which could mean anything that can mean $5. That can mean $499. I didn't really read further with the article. Um, but I think that what they were trying to say is $500 is not a significant amount of money if you look at monthly income, which, you know, I can understand the, I, it, in some ways it isn't. But if, if that's the difference between um, you making your mortgage or you making your rent or you being able to have electricity or you having a phone or you being able to eat, you know, then $500 is a lot. Okay. There are some interesting differences between the cost of women's and men's shoes. And I assume that the um, women's shoes were going to be more expensive because I feel like there's always a tax for being a woman. There's always a tax for being poor. There's always a tax for being black or colored or whatever. You know, it's more expensive. So I was shocked to see, at least in this article, Except I think I it, like it was a chart right on the headline or right, you know, on the front page. And I think maybe there were like 10 different companies, you know, and one of them, the women's shoes were more expensive than the men's shoes. But in all the others, the men's shoes were more expensive than the women's. I might read that article just to see if I think it's true, because that just doesn't fit the narrative that I have in my head. Maybe the narrative that I have in my head isn't true. Yeah, it's probably more, it's, it's worse to be a rich person than a poor person. It's worse to be a white person than a black person. And it's worse to be a woman than a, I mean, it's worse to be a man than a woman. I don't know. Jay-Z. Yay, Jay-Z again. Jay-Z, quote, we must use our platforms to demand social justice. And that reminded me of, um, there's a quote that says, you know, we must speak or let us speak, even if our voices shake. Even if our voices are shaking, let us speak. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Let's be strong and courageous and speak truth. Say the truth. Say what's real. All right. So I'm, I'm just, I don't, I don't, this is coming off the grill. So, um, you know, I'm all here for it, Jay-Z. Another yay for Jay-Z. Okay. Artificial iris responds to light like real eyes. Technology, y'all. I mean, it's just, it's just, um, you know, moving right along. The New York Times uses a full page to print all of Trump's lies since taking office. Tourist boat sinks on Columbia Reservoir. What? I didn't read the article, but... You know, sending out love and peace and prayers to everybody near and far, human and non-human. May all beings be happy. May all beings share my happiness and my peace. May all beings feel loved and um, share love. So with that, Fabulites, that's it. Notes on the news feed. Be you. Be fabulous. Be fabulous. You. Peace.